Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in today's video, I want to talk about the concept of having multiple soloing options that you can potentially apply over a given chord progression. So the chord progression is always going to be the dictator of what your options are. You look at the chord progression, you ask yourself a couple questions. You ask yourself, are all these chords part of the same key? Are there any outside chords being used? Once you know that information, then you know what your options are. So option number one, we could use the pentatonic scale, and that's exactly what I did in the beginning. So all of the chords are part of the same key here. We have a C major chord, a D minor chord, a G major chord, and an A minor chord being used in the rhythm section of the demo video. Using your circle of fifths, you can see that they all fall into the grouping of six together, therefore everything is 100% in the same key. You can call this the key of C major if you want, you can call this the key of A minor if you want, it makes no difference. There's a C major chord present in the rhythm section, there's an A minor chord present in the rhythm section. So whether it's C major, whether it's A minor, it's, it's really a matter of semantics. The important thing here is that everything is in fact part of the same key. There are no outside chords being used. Knowing that information, we can say, all right, everything's part of the same key, so we only need to use one scale. We don't have to play a different scale over each chord. Just one single scale over the entire progression. That's the soloing framework that we're using for this first option. So the pentatonic notes for this key are A, C, D, E, G. That's the A minor pentatonic scale notes. That's the C major pentatonic scale notes. All right. Key of A minor, key of C major, A minor pentatonic scale, C major pentatonic scale. Call it what you want. It's the same five notes. So I just chose to play those five notes here in this little pattern right here. Uh, we can call this pentatonic position number four. So you have your A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, and then I bent up to this A right here. I could have used the entire fretboard if I want. I could have used those five notes anywhere I wanted to, but I just chose to use that little pattern right there just because I like pentatonic position number four. I just like that pattern. Um, another example of where this framework is used is uh, the Stairway to Heaven solo. Everyone knows the Stairway to Heaven solo. That's the same key. The key of Stairway to Heaven at the end, um, the rhythm section is an A minor chord, a G major chord, and an F major chord. So the rhythm section is going like this the whole time. Only they play it in power chords. Power chords are just reduced major or minor chords. So you can kind of make it sound more rock by reducing your major and minor chords to power chords and it sounds like this right, but really what's going on is an a minor chord g major a minor g major f major it's the same key jimmy page says okay i'm in the key of a minor i'm going to use the pentatonic scale same five notes. That's the framework that he's using. I'm going to use the, the A, C, D, E, and G notes. And he uses the whole fretboard. All right. In my demo, I just kind of stuck to this little area. But Jimmy Page, you know, he starts out in pentatonic position number one. So that last note right there, that's actually the note F. That's not part of the pentatonic framework, but it's still part of the overall key scale, the diatonic scale, which is what we're going to talk about next. But 99% of the Stairway to Heaven solo is just the pentatonic framework. He throws in that note F just to kind of spice things up a little bit, sound a bit more melodic. It's still in key. He starts out there in pentatonic position number one. Then he comes up to pentatonic position number two. Same five notes. He's still just using the A, C, D, E, and G notes. Then he jumps up to pentatonic position number three. Then he jumps up to pentatonic position number four. All right, then he kind of noodles around in pentatonic position number four for a while. But the majority of the solo, 99% of the solo, pentatonic framework. You have your key, you identify the key, play the pentatonic scale. Option number two, you could utilize the full seven note diatonic scale. Option number one, we just looked at the five pentatonic notes of the key. A key contains seven notes. A key signature has seven notes in it. We've already identified that this is the key of either C major or A minor. 
The notes of the C major scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The notes of the A natural minor scale are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's the same seven notes. Call this the key of C major. Call this the key of A minor. Call it whatever you want. So when you utilize the full seven note scale, instead of just kind of limiting yourself to the five pentatonic notes, it's going to open up more melodic possibilities. Again, when I did this in the demo right here, I stuck to this little area, but I could have used the entire fretboard if I wanted to. I have the entire fretboard available to me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G are the seven notes for this framework. Um, but yeah, I just I just played right here, and I think I stuck to the high three strings. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, back at A. So I kind of just stuck to that area as my framework. I could have used any pattern I wanted. I could have used anywhere on the entire neck of the guitar. Back to the Stairway to Heaven example, Jimmy Page starts starts out down here in pentatonic position number one, but he throws in that note F. So that note F isn't a pentatonic note, but it's still one of the notes of the key scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or if you're looking at this from the major perspective, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So 99% of the Stairway to Heaven solo is pentatonic, 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 but he throws in that note F once in a while just to kind of make things sound a bit more melodic, you know? So you don't have to stick 100% to pentatonic. You don't have to stick 100% to diatonic. They go hand in hand with each other. It's just that when you reduce your playing to just the five pentatonic notes, it's going to have a more rock type of sound. Listen to a lot of Zach Wilde solos. Zach Wilde is just a pentatonic shredder. All of his solos are just like super fast pentatonic playing. It sounds really, really cool, but it has that specific sound. That's the pentatonic sound. You know, go ahead and throw in those additional two notes. It's still going to work. It's still going to be in key. It's still going to sound cool. It's just going to have a more melodic type of sound to it. All right, then we have option number three. And this is the thing to do when you want to focus on what to do over each specific chord. For the first two options, we didn't really pay much attention to what the specific chords were. We had to pay attention to the chords just to make the determination as to what key it was in. We've already determined this is the key of C major, this is the key of A minor. It's the same key signature, relative major minor pair. One scale. We only need to focus on one scale. So a lot of people, they get the wrong idea. A lot of beginners, they get the wrong idea. They think, okay, I have to play a scale over the C major chord, and then I have to play a different scale over the D minor chord. Then I have to play a different scale over the G major chord. It doesn't work like that. If everything's part of the same key, you only have to focus on one single scale. If you have outside chords being used, then that's where you switch up scales. But we're not doing that for this video. We're just focusing on one single key. Therefore, we have one single scale. But what to do over each specific chord, you can arpeggiate each chord. You can play arpeggios. So over the C chord, you're going to play a C major arpeggio. Over the D minor chord, you're going to play a D minor arpeggio. Over the G major chord, G major arpeggio. Over the A minor chord, A minor arpeggio. So um, the arpeggios that I'm using, I'm using seventh arpeggios. So this, this is where we start to dig deeper into you know what constitutes a key. So... Using your grouping of six on the circle of fifths, um, all of your minor chords are going to be on your inner circle. So your minor chords in seventh form are always going to become minor seventh chords. The chord in the outer circle center position, that's always going to become a major seventh chord. The chord in the outer circle counterclockwise position, that's also going to become a major seventh chord. The chord in the outer circle clockwise position, that's going to become a dominant seventh chord. So the chords that we used in this rhythm section, there was a C major chord, so that becomes a C major 7 chord. Uh, then there was a D minor chord, so that becomes a D minor 7 chord. We used a G major chord, so that becomes a G7 chord or a G dominant 7 chord. And then we have an A minor chord, so that becomes an A minor 7th chord. So those are going to be the arpeggios that we use over each chord. So over the C major chord, my framework that I'm using is a C major 7 arpeggio. The seventh here is indicated by the blue note. So if I just wanted to use just the C major arpeggio, I would have done this. So that would be the C, E, and G. Those are the chord tones of the C major chord. But I wanted to throw the seventh in there as well, just to kind of give myself an extra note to play with. So I threw in the B as well. All 
right, so over the C major chord, I was just kind of noodling around in this framework. That's actually the exact run I did. All right, so that's the C major seventh arpeggio. That's what I played over the C major chord. When I got to the D minor chord, I did a D minor seven arpeggio. So again, I didn't have to play the D minor seven. I could have just played a D minor arpeggio. So the D minor arpeggio notes are D, F, and A. But I threw that seventh in there as well, just to kind of give myself some uh, more stuff to play around with. And uh, Mark Knopfler in Sultans of Swing actually uses this exact framework. So in the beginning when it's starting out. He's using this uh, seventh arpeggio framework. He's going. That last part right there, he, he throws in one additional note that's added to the seventh arpeggio framework. But the majority of what he's doing is. All right, so Sultan's a swing. Mark Knopfler is constantly playing around with these seventh arpeggio frameworks. Um, that's just a quick example right there. And then when it gets up to the G chord, again, I could have just played just the G major arpeggio, which would be the notes G, B, and D. But I wanted to throw in the seventh in there as well. And in this key, G major is the five chord. The five chord is the dominant seventh chord. On the circle of fifths, that's your outer circle um, clockwise position. That's a dominant seventh chord. So dominant seventh arpeggio would be like this. Again, the blue notes indicate where the sevenths are, so you can choose to ignore those blue notes if you want to just focus on just the major arpeggio, or you can play the seventh form. It's just the adding in the seventh that gives you a, a, an extra note to play with, just a, you know. So that's what I did over the G major chord. Then when we got to the A minor chord, again, I can just play the A minor triad, A, C, and E. Or you can include the seventh in there, which is what I did. And I think over the A minor chord, I just kind of went. Again, a very Mark Knopfler-esque thing to do. Which I think is pretty much completely ripped off from uh, Mark Knopfler's stuff from Sultans of Swing. Can't help it, he's a great player, so uh, you know I, I steal his licks sometimes. I hope he doesn't mind. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. So, you know, just using those notes, there's your fifth, there's your seventh, there's your uh, root, there's your third, your minor third. So, you know, right there. Another little Mark Knopfler-esque thing to do using this uh, A minor seven framework. When it comes to these arpeggio frameworks, again, you don't have to just limit yourself. You don't have to play a C major seventh arpeggio here or a D minor seventh arpeggio here or a G dominant seventh arpeggio here, A minor seventh arpeggio here. You don't have to do that. You can. I just kind of did that because it kind of lines up with the chords. Like here's a C major chord right here. Here's a D minor chord here. Here's a G major chord up here. There's an A minor chord. So I just chose to use arpeggio shapes that kind of surround those chords just for the purpose of this demo. But again, these notes are all over the place. The notes of a C major 7 chord are C, E, G, and B. So anywhere there's a C, E, G, or B on the entire neck of the guitar, that would count as playing within the C major 7th arpeggio. Same thing with the other chords. The notes that make up a D minor 7th chord are D, F, A, and C. So anywhere there's a D, F, A, or C on the entire neck of the guitar, that would constitute as falling into this um, uh, D minor 7th arpeggio framework. All right, so that's the thing to do on a per chord basis. All right, guys, so my camera's running out of battery here. Um, I'm going to have to cut this one a little short. I hope you guys like this video. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.